Oh, let me tell Eric about this acting gig real quick. I don't know if I have time right now because I got to get ready for the mother daughter. I got a ton of things to do today. Eric, real quick, you want to know about this acting gig? Yes, yes, please. All right, Gary. I've had that thing sitting here on the console. It's a, it's oh, the, there it is. I see it. Okay, I got it. Back, back. Uh, hello, Howard Stern. I'm not sure who to talk to about this, but I'd like to offer Eric Lynch. Is that your last name? Eric, Eric. Yes. Because it would be funny if this wasn't really right, for it Eric wasn't the actor. For Eric. A part on The Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, a soap opera. As a daily listener of The Howard Stern Show, I'm aware of Eric's struggle to become an actor. I think a role on The Bold and Beautiful would be perfect for Eric for a number of reasons. Look at this. This guy really wants it. He's selling me on it. I know Eric is very particular about the type of character he wants to play. We are happy to write any sort of character for him. Hmm. Geez, they don't even have a, something in mind. They're going to write it. Well, we since we control this, we should determine what we want him to play. <laughs> and then Eric won't do it. Well, okay, let's come up with something he'll do, but it right. would still be interesting to us. Eric, any suggestions? On, did you want to be on The Bold and the Beautiful? I have no idea. I mean, wow. So, <laughs> wait a minute. So... <laughs> Soaps kinda, right now, soaps are kind of going downhill. <laughs> oh, you can't be on a show that might get wow. canceled? Is that what you're saying? You always surprise me. Like, like, wow. An actor, actors would kill for any, you know, they, they'll yeah, go they do don't theater. Care. They'll do, they'll, they'll do community theater. They do whatever they can when they're starting out. Only, I'm not saying I would do it. This is. Wow. It's on TV. Right. I don't even understand you, Eric. Is it true you turned down the lead in Argo <laughs> when Ben no. Affleck called? No, because someone wrote me that, night. and he wound up having to do it himself. <laughs> yeah, Ben Affleck then had to go star in it. I still would love to take a movie like Argo and just get the rights to the script, and then just put Eric in it and, and hire the, the entire cast that was in it. Just put, just see what Eric does. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I would consider doing it. I mean, where does Bold and Beautiful tape? That's, I think, in Los Angeles. Yeah, I think they're out in Hollywood. If you can pass along your contact email or phone number information, I'd appreciate it. Or feel free to contact me. I think we better control this because I don't want Eric. We go to get this guy on the phone. Hey, Gary. I got to interview the uh, mom and daughter who do porn together. And the 7 o'clock hour, you think in the 8 o'clock hour, you get this cat on the phone, I got his number, I got everything, and we put him on with Eric, and we come up with a role. I'll give it a shot. Because I don't even know what's happening on The Bold and the Beautiful Deal. Yeah, I don't know what the storylines are. Hey. Feel like, my feeling was, if they're looking for Eric, the show's in trouble. <laughs> That's a, yeah. Eric's like, he doesn't want to be on a show in trouble. Yeah, to me, if you're looking for Eric, you've got problems on that show. But The Bold and the Beautiful has been around since I was a kid. I think. Not since you were a kid. No, a long time, a long time. But you know what's going on with a lot of these, a lot of these uh, soap operas are going out of business. So I'm thinking maybe they need the publicity. A lot of them are now moving the soap opera to the internet. Like they run them on the internet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody wa do you watch any show on the internet? No, of course not. I got enough shows to watch. I'm going to watch some shit on the internet. <laughs> I mean, you know it's shitty if it's on the internet. I agree. You know what I mean? Like a show made just for the internet. You rarely see anything. Like, even I go to some of these, like, comedy websites. Someone says, hey, this guy's doing some comedy. And, you know, he's doing it on the Internet. And you go, oh, maybe that's cutting edge. You, you look at it and you go, oh, it's so shitty. No wonder he's not on TV. Like, I'm watching it. Like, you watch an informational show if it's, like, six or seven minutes long. But you're not going to watch a scripted hour-long show on the, your computer, are you? If it was good, no, I would. I wouldn't. Well, Rob, which one is it that you watch, then? I don't watch yeah. any of them. They're not good They're yet. not good. <laughs> no one's going to put any money into that. You know what I'd like to see Eric play? Like a sadistic guy who has a woman locked in his basement. Would you play that, Eric? No. <laughs> Besides all that, you know, I know why Eric won't play that part. How's he going to lock a woman up in his basement? Well, they, they'll write that into the script. They'll, they'll probably have henchmen. 
Oh, because I was going to say, how's he going to gra- grab a woman, tie her up, and throw well, her? Well, he's going to have his assistant do that. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, why wouldn't you play a guy who locks a woman in his basement? Because I've already been accused of that in real life. <laughs> you have? When? Uh, by us. <laughs> but what do you mean? This isn't real life. It's a it's a role. It's a it's an acting performance. And you don't you don't remember the whole uh, modeling agents thing that Johnny and I came up with, yeah. and then started accusing me of doing wanting to do that to walk up. Yeah, the but that was just for fun. We were laughing. That's all. You, you weren't. First of all, there's no girl who wanted to be in your modeling agency. Remember, Secondly, the girl who won had to spend a year with Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay. You really won't play that. No. All right. How's this? You're a soldier back from the war. You went to war looking normal, and you came back like how you are, like you got injured in Iraq. Would you play that? What did I get? Hit with a shrink ray? No, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, you know, like. <laughs> well, kind of bomb. Well, let's say, like, you know, you were, you know, it was like a, a war thing broke out, and yeah, you're in a wheelchair. The military doesn't hire anyone under six feet, probably. Or yeah, but five. I mean, we'll make it like your if legs got blown off. We're saying you were six feet at one. Yeah, you were six, six feet. feet. You don't have to be. Six but your legs feet got blown off in the war. We could hide your legs. That's easy. We'll just fold them underneath you. What do you say? That's pretty good. Uh, I don't know about that one. Wow. What? Jesus. I You'd thought be that was a war hero. I thought that, yeah, a war hero. Right. And you won't play that? I have to consider that. <laughs> wow. He's considering. Would you play a guy with AIDS? No. Wow. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Why not? Because that, again, goes back to something that I have been accused of in real life. Oh, oh come God. on. Here Nobody thinks that. You wouldn't play a character who contracted the AIDS virus? No. Wow. Wow. I can't even come up with a character for this guy. That's somewhat interesting. He won't play a guy who locks a woman in a basement. He won't play a man with AIDS. He might consider playing a, an Iraq war veteran. What would you like to play, Eric? An easy thing to play would be a patient in a hospital. <laughs> I want to see that. Uh, All right, play? we'll put you in the hospital and give you AIDS. Right, we got to give you a disease. <laughs> Would you play firewood like in a, in a like you're fire? <laughs> like you're just we open up the scene and you're in a um you're a log in a fireplace fire. and you're a log on the fireplace, <laughs> a talking log. No, no. <laughs> Like someone accidentally threw you in with a bundle of logs and you're freaking out. And you're afraid the family's going to come home and light a fire in the fireplace. You wouldn't play that? No. No? No. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hey, don't light that fire. I'm a, I'm a human. <laughs> I'm not a bundle of logs. <laughs> hey, would you play a pimp? A man who is in charge of a stable of women? Yeah. Okay. All you right. would. Oh, okay. Oh. How about a drug kingpin? Oh, you play that. No, that. Um. No. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this all day. <laughs> it's, it's like, what would Eric play? Right. Is the game? <laughs> like you just like, what if you're a drug kingpin, but they're legal drugs? Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Turns out you, he's, he's like the you're guy broke. Who, who commands all the aspirin. <laughs> yeah, you're broke, and you're like, uh, you know, no one wants to buy my drugs because I don't want to get into the illegal drug trade. I, so I'm just dealing aspirin and like uh, over the counter drugs like uh, Claritin, nas Claritin, nasal spray, <laughs> Tylenol. And people are like, well, I could go buy that in a store. Why would I buy that from you? Would you play that? 
I'd have, <laughs> I'd have to think about that. Wow. Well. Can I ask him a question, Howard? Yeah. What's to think about? Like, what's the big dilemma? I don't know. I have a great role. He doesn't role. even know. Please consider this one. <laughs> Bold and beautiful. So there's this guy, kind of like this kooky millionaire. That's you. And you decide you want to invent a new sport. And you're, like, upset because, you know, hey, you have physical disabilities and stuff. So you become a dog jockey. Like, you ride Great Danes. <laughs> and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to just get other people to ride Great Danes. And you want the sport to take off. What do you think of that role? Because wouldn't it be great to see Eric riding a Great Dane? Well, I don't think Eric could ride a great. Well, thing. CGI stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They can. They they make a fake dog. Because I was thinking of you know you'd have a little buggy and and <laughs> oh, okay the, and the dog great would Dane be a trotter. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah, you can't sit on a dog. That'd be cruel to the dog. You're right, Eric. So you invent a whole new sport, and it actually catches on, like where you have like a little cart behind the dog. <laughs> And, and the dog pulls you, and you know, it becomes a legitimate. You're the greatest jockey. Yeah, and it even becomes an Olympic sport. What do you think of that role? It sounds good. Oh, oh, oh we hit on something. Oh, yeah. All right, Gary. In the eight o'clock hour, get a hold of this Casey guy. Get Eric on the phone. You know. I'll give him two options. I'm going to suggest the dog jockey storyline. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good storyline. I'd watch that. I'd be there. <laughs> what about this as a plot line? Russian family, uh, they give birth to, you know, they an American family. A couple adopts you from Russia. They're expecting a little kid, but they get you. And you try to convince them you're a child because you want to get out of Russia. No. Yeah. Uh, mm. I All right. That was well, coming. All right. The dog jockey that was gone. How great is that dog jockey thing? I love it. Imagine him I, being I, pulled by a car, like the <laughs> car is hitched <laughs> to the dog, and he's got to What? By the way, the I, I'm pretty sure the reason and why Beyonce did the look. The sinking thing. Go ahead. Was was because of the fact that singing in cold conditions like that. Yeah, Kelly Clarkson did it. Yeah, but after James Taylor was singing, he got interviewed by Brian Williams, and he said, to "Brian Williams, it's not easy to sing in cold weather. It affects." Of course it does. That's even But goes, that's what Howard said. If you can't do it, don't do it. Yeah, I mean, don't show up then. I mean, Kelly Clarkson did it. James Taylor did it. You can't be a singer and show up and not sing. She could have just played a record for us. Yeah, I mean, I could have done that. You could have done that, Eric. You're not upset about it? Not really. Wow, I'm upset. Why not make Eric... A, a nightclub singer. Hmm, go ahead. They, they, I'm with they you. Also, they also do that during the Macy's parade. Yeah, but, but it's Macy's. known. They, she was. She tried to fool everyone. She even pulled the, as King of All Blacks says, she even pulled the earpiece out of her ear to, 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 to scam us. I'm sorry. Yeah, she made it no. look like she was singing yeah, for please. real. Please, she was trying to fool us. Eric owns a nightclub. Go ahead. And he's the guy who entertains. Oh, he's a when singer. You come, he sit up, sits on the piano stool. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> they go to a nightclub and Eric's the singer? Though? Right. You see the little fingers on the keys and mm. Eric's a singing. What do you think, Eric? You'll play that, right? Yeah, the only problem is everybody's heard me sing. No, the, you, you would actually be lip syncing. They'll probably have Right. A... We're going to give you a good voice. Right. Like you'll have, they'll have a guy singing for real. You'll just have to mouth the words. Right. And all the girls fall in love with you. You know, like, I, you'll have beautiful girls sitting around your piano. Yeah, you know, we'll get, like, Bruno Mars to sing, and you'll just mouth it. And and girls go wild for you, because yeah. even with your physical problems, 
You have a beautiful voice. You have such a beautiful voice that, you know, you're like bigger than the Beatles. <laughs> you like that? Yes. Okay. Hey, you like that a lot. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pitch that. So the dog jockey or Eric the lounge singer. Hey, what about this? Uh, post, uh, it, it's post-World War II. We'll have to go back in time. You're a Nazi in hiding. I was going to say World War II. Yeah, that's right. He's a no oh, wait, I'll tell you what. Let's make it contemporary. You're a modern, you're one of these uh, neo-Nazis. That's like a new Nazi. You're a member <laughs> of the Nazi party. You've pissed them off and now you're in hiding. No. Hmm. Hmm. How about being a mob turncoat? Ooh. What about this? And he has to, you know, testify against the mob. They're trying to kill him. How about uh, Eric plays a baby that was left on a step? Oh. Ah. And uh, they come out in the orphanage and they're like, wow, it's a talking baby. What do you think of that's good? It's got teeth and everything. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> you won't play that? How about an Al-Qaeda sympathizer? Like, you're an American, but you're plotting. Like, like sort of like Homeland. You're... You were seduced by Al Qaeda, gorgeous woman from uh, Al Qaeda. She's a reporter for Al Jazeera. Not saying there's any Al Qaeda members in Al Jazeera, but this woman happens to be. She recruits you. You become an enemy of this country, and you're contemplating blowing yourself up for Al Qaeda. And he's making a suicide tape. Yes, <laughs> that's where we see him in the first scene. He's like, oh, wow, I am sympathizer with Al Qaeda. I'm going to blow myself up. You've been told that I'm crazy. Right. But I am here to tell you I'm not. <laughs> and I do love my country, but we've done wrong. What do you think of that? That's an interesting part. No? No. What? Was that a no coming? <laughs> that was, that a, was no. a great part. No. <laughs> 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 How about you're a Terminator from the future? Well, this is a terrible Terminator. <laughs> but everyone, Terminator? but I'm bold and beautiful. Everyone, even the women, kick your ass. <laughs> 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 All right, I've got my two plot lines: the dog jockey and Eric the lounge singer. And I will uh, take care of this in the eight o'clock hour. Okay, Eric. If All I, right. If I can get this gentleman on the phone. Okay. All right. Thank talk you. to you later. Right. I guess you'll call me back. If if I can get him on the phone. Right. If not, we'll have to wait till like, next week. All right, no All problem. Right. All right, later. Bye. I think the loud singer could be a recurring role, you know, like he mm -hmm. has the club in town. And... Yeah, but the dog jockey. Oh, that's come on. funny. Please. <laughs> I mean, don't you want the dog jockey? I do. Yeah. I want to see him in that buggy with that, those funny colored outfits <laughs> and the goggles. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's a great storyline. I'm going to watch this show if he's on it as a dog jockey. I'm not saying I wouldn't watch it if he was a lounge singer, but more if he's a dog jockey. <laughs> he invents a whole new sport. All right, we'll uh, be back right after these words. First of all, Robin, picking up from the 6 o'clock hour, I now have Casey. Uh, Casey... Kasbrzik, the producer. Oh, I'm glad you found his name. Yeah. He's got, it's almost like Mr. Missisca plays. <laughs> Casey Kasbrzik, who is the producer of The Bold and the Beautiful, and Eric the actor. Let me get them up. And then I must get to uh, A Day in the Life of Gary's voicemail. I have to get to your news. I have to get to uh, the new Hansy songs that have just come out. Okay. Uh, there's so much, so much, Robin. The Hansy, uh, uh, Show moving right along in development? Yeah, they're still messing around with this uh, theme song. This is a um, heavy metal Metallica Hansy theme song. I like that one. I do. I do, too. I, I think that might be it. All right. This is Casey McSixaplex from... Casey McSixaplex, are you there? 
Hey, good morning, Howard. Good morning, my friend. <laughs> and let me get to Eric, the actor. Are you there, Eric, the actor? Yes, I'm here. All right, let's ready to there. negotiate. I hear Eric is using his <laughs> negotiating voice. By the way, uh, for those of you who didn't tune in at six o'clock this morning, first of all, shame on you. Uh, but second of all, this is the letter I received from Mr. Casey Casper. How do you pronounce your last How name, How do you pronounce Casey? your last name, Casey? You said it correctly, Casper Zick. Oh, okay. thank you. First time. See, let's see if I can do it again the second time. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure who to talk to about this, but I'd like to offer Eric Lynch or Eric the Acura a part on The Bold and the Beautiful. As a daily listener of The Howard Stern Show, I'm aware of Eric's struggle to become an actor. I think a role on Bold and Beautiful would be perfect for Eric for a number of reasons. Uh, by the way, uh, Casey, we uh, Robin had a theory that if anyone writes for Eric the actor, it means the show is in trouble. <laughs> that was Gary. Well, oh, is there any truth to that? Well, you know, daytime is on the upswing. Actually, the ratings have improved. I've heard that. So, so um, you know, this is that's not that's not the case. Good. Oh, okay. well, that's good to hear because Eric yeah. didn't want to be part of a failing project. Yeah, Eric almost said, "I don't know." <laughs> daytime is on the downswing. Well, actually, somebody told me every show that Eric's on is canceled. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. Well, Fringe wasn't canceled. It just ran its course. It ran course. its course. Yeah. But, but okay, I, think so. it, I think it had to run its course. It, it, was, it would have lasted longer without Eric. I know Eric okay. is very particular about the type of character he wants to play. We're happy to write any sort of character for him. Now, that intrigued yeah. me because I, mm -hmm. I, you heard the conversation this morning. I went through about yeah. 50 different character or plot developments for him. Right. And he's difficult, but let me tell you the two again that we've come up with that Eric has agreed to. <clears throat> uh, the first plot line would be that Eric is a uh, an eccentric billionaire, and he has invented a new sport. And because of his size, he figures he wants to, instead of doing horse racing, he wants to do dog racing, where he would hitch a uh, chariot, of, of, in a sense, to a greyhound, and this sport would become very, very big, and he would be the inventor of it. And we, as well as the lead jockey, because yeah. he's going to be in one of the cars. He would probably be the world's greatest jockey. And when you want to kill off his character, he could just fall out of the cart <laughs> and you get trampled by the other dogs. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then eaten by dogs. <laughs> I got to see that. Okay. That would be one plot line. Okay, got it. The other plot line would then be Eric the Lounge Singer. Oh, okay. Where uh, Eric, I don't know what the situation would be, but somehow he's the somehow guy. Somehow there's a club, and he's the guy who, and all the, and all, you know, your lead characters fall in love with him. Right, like they're like, wow, you know, that guy looks a little strange, but my God, he has such a soulful voice, you know. <laughs> and, you know, like, 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 I don't know, like, maybe it's like at a, a very high end, uh, uh, like a private airport or something, and they have entertainment for the rich people, and some of your characters come in, and he's sitting there in his wheelchair, but he's on the piano, or maybe he's even balanced on the piano. <laughs> sitting on the piano? Yeah, like next to a potted plant. With his legs crossed. Yeah, and like he's sitting there, and all of a sudden he breaks into, you know, a whole lot of love, but, you know, kind of his version of it. And he doesn't have to be singing. I mean, it could be lip-synced. Okay. All and he right. sings like his incredibly beautiful version of a song, and the character's like, oh, my God, that guy. I mean, I, I wasn't attracted to him when I walked in, but... Jesus Christ, when he sings, I just fucking get excited. <laughs> you know, that's this... actually very, very interesting. That's, and that's something that really? we should do. But I, I was thinking <laughs> combining both of those. Go ahead. <laughs> A billionaire who can sing. Who A invent... greyhound driver by day. <laughs> Would you be willing to do that? I mean, because then I'll make this happen. I mean, I, I'm not just giving Eric away. Well, uh,. Because what's important... And by the way, can he live in a haunted jack-in-a-box? Like, uh... <laughs> well, we take place in, uh, like, the real world, so we don't have surreal things right. like that. You don't have the, the fairy tale. Well, kind of why is that a fairy no. tale? <laughs> that he lives in a jack-in-the-box? Martin, I mean, yeah, but I'm talking about the lounge singer who also <laughs> oh, no, invented... No, 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 he was just talking about the jack-in-the-box. Right. The jack-in-the-box. But th this is... I was thinking he could be kind of a, uh, a retired dog jockey of sorts, but now he has a career as a, a cabaret singer. Yeah, uh, I'm up for that. Yeah, we, Does he we, still we, wear we those jockey that. outfits? Well, what if he's like, uh, what if he's like, hey Eric, would you play, like, let's say you're, um, 
You're like a Richard Simmons type exercise guru, except you were in a car accident. <laughs> so you still teach exercise classes, but Look you have to do it, you have to do it from a wheelchair. No. No. Okay. Oh. Well, See, that's the, okay. The I got the though, other two. The main thing, though, is I just want to hear some passion and enthusiasm from Eric. I want to know he wants to do this. First. All right, I'll let you guys talk. That's a, that's a fair enough request. Eric Casey's saying, like, are you into this or what? Yeah. Um, I get into it. <laughs> okay. Um, can I ask you? Can I ask you a couple questions? Go for it. Okay. Have you ever watched The Bull and the Beautiful? No. Okay. Uh, can you memorize dialogue? Yes. How are you at taking direction? <laughs> I mean, sorry. <laughs> what did you say, Eric? I'm good. Okay. Can you work fast? Yes. Yeah, because soap operas they do they work fast. Yeah, I got to tell you, my wife did a couple of uh, scenes, or, or, you know, a couple of days or, or weeks on a soap opera, and she says it's they they throw a lot of lines at you. We do two episodes a day. Mm. <laughs> Eric, that's known in our industry as quick turnaround. Quick, exactly. <laughs> right, Robin. Absolutely. Yeah. These shows you've been on, Eric, they're weekly shows. Yeah, these are this is quick turnaround. All right, and I sort of. Yeah, I sort of wanted to create a character for you, Eric, that um, could reoccur. You know, I don't want it just one time. That's what I, I thought of the lounge singer. Yeah, that's perfect, Robin. I love that. Yeah, but he's got to be a former dog jockey. <laughs> <laughs> or else this doesn't go any further. <laughs> Maybe there's a picture of him on a dog hanging behind the piano or something. With the mud on his on his goggles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, like someone like, works into the dialogue, though. Oh, what is that picture of you in, in um, with the dog? And you go, oh, I was a... Uh, I used to ride greyhounds. I was the world's greatest dog jockey. I was a great dog jockey. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, but that was another uh, time, sweetheart. But, but does Eric sing? Do you sing Eric? <laughs> no. I... He's going to need help in that area. He's going to lip sync. And then have you had, have you had acting training? Oh, forget no. it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I didn't, okay. he didn't hear your answer. I didn't hear it. I, well, if no one had talked over me, but I said no. Okay. Would you be interested in getting some training? I guess. Because here's the thing. We get stacks and stacks of headshots every day from people wanting to be on the show. Sure. Right. So we're going to take a part away from them to give it to you. No, so, you got to understand. So Eric doesn't want to actually do any hard work learning Eric, the craft. Eric is a very special kind yeah, of actor. Eric's the kind he of he doesn't want to learn. Yeah, like Eric's the kind of actor that really has no training. <laughs> doesn't want to study. Does, yeah, doesn't want to doesn't want to put any effort into it. <laughs> and he just wants everything handed to him. And he wants to play roles close to who he is. Right, and doesn't really want to actually sweat it out and do work. And you know, he's, he's not a, morphing into anything. A lot of times we say to casting people, he's he's Marlon Brando with. Without talent, <laughs> think of him like that. I mean, let's be honest, right? Do I have that right, Eric? You don't want to actually do any work. I don't know about that. I mean, you. Well, you haven't so far. You call yourself Eric the actor, and you've never pursued one class. Yeah, I mean, K Casey's saying, "Hey, we need you to take some acting lessons." You're just not even going to put yourself out there, right? I mean, I guess I would. What are you our, talking, our, Casey? Does he need, like, a, a coach? Well, well, our casting director could work with him. I see. Um, before he appears. Cause, you know, Good we luck. Uh, can we, can we uh, film that? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I want to see the I want to see the casting director's head explode. <laughs> You're going to well, choke me to death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, 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 wouldn't that be funny, Robin? Like, like seven hours in, like, and, I'll, and I'll produce it where we have the clock turning. And, like, right. and seven hours later, the, Eric's no better at it than... than the, the, the guy has no hair. His hair yeah, just like, pulled he just, out in back. It's like, you know, they show those pictures of Obama, how he's aged in the White House. Like, the casting director, after seven hours of working with Eric, is just... And then, like, Casey walks in and goes, well, how's it going? And, and the guy's like, what, the truth? Or you want some bullshit? It's like Herbert Lom after he's worked with Peter Sellers. Yeah, like they, they walk in and they don't recognize the casting uh, director anymore. He, he the, the acting coach. In fact, they have to cart him off. You know, he's all wrapped up in yeah, like a straight jacket. Or he's killed himself. He's hanging from <laughs> like they walk in to check on how the session's going and he's hanging from the ceiling. Eric is sitting there and the casting director's yeah. dead. Right. <laughs> 
Eric, you might as well be honest with Casey. You're not interested in any kind of hard work where you'd actually have to learn your craft. I, I'm sure I would. You, you're open to that? See, the more, the more yeah. you want to put into it, the bigger the part will be. Because otherwise, a lot of times when we have guest stars, uh, we take place in the fashion industry. So they'll be a reporter or a, a photographer at a fashion show. But oh. I'd rather give you some, or, you know, work on something that would be meteor. Right, right, yeah. What about, like, if Eric would be a, uh, a very, oh. what if, you know, I, I, the soap opera thing, couldn't Eric be evil twins? Or couldn't he be, like, one good guy and then a bad guy? How about a bad nanny? You know, he's all oh. sweet. With, and then they catch him on a nanny cam. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> sitting on the, the kid. kid Eric, would you play a bad nanny? No. Oh, oh. oh too bad. Huh. That's such a meaty role, you know. Hey, we've hired a babysitter. I, think he's, I mean, that's that's Emmy stuff. And he's like, hey, hi, everyone. How are everyone's doing? You know, and then the parents leave, and he just starts, like, fucking right, whacking. That could build. That could build, you know? Yeah. yeah. First, he's a good guy, and then we see him not being so good over, like, an arc. Let's get down to what Eric's really interested in. He's not really interested in working hard or actually learning his craft. He just wants a lot of money. How much can And a rider. He, wa- he loves a good yeah, rider. And he loves soda in his dressing room. <laughs> That's what he's... He's after all the uh, perks. A dressing room with Pepsi. You're right. Eric, lay it out for Casey what it's going to take to get you in there. Where do you shoot, first of all, L.A.? Uh, yeah, Los Angeles. Wow, nice. CBS and Eric, aren't you going to demand like an oxygen tank and all that and, shit? He doesn't have to fly, so oh. I don't know. Well, that guy can leave up to Johnny. <laughs> oh, you don't do those kind of negotiations. We do, we do have a, a budget, you know, we're, <laughs> so we'd have to negotiate this writer. Uh, well, here's, uh, here's Eric... Uh, Fake Eric can, to negotiate yeah. with you. Go ahead, fake Eric. No singing lessons. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you want Johnny to talk to Casey next? <laughs> can we have that conversation? <laughs> <laughs> you all right, Casey? I, I can promise you a your name on the door. I can give no. you that. And the actresses visit me. So I can stare at them. Whoever is doing that, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, it sounds not like- what I fucking sound like. <laughs> Maybe on Monday we'll do the negotiating. We'll get Johnny on the phone, and uh, I don't know. Who wants to hear all that? I also want to let Eric know our show's seen around the world. It's the number one daily watch drama series. So you'll be an international star. How many people watch that show? Really? Be honest. Don't give me the hype. Uh, in the U.S.? Yeah. It, we have our, our latest ratings were 2.6. So that's. Yeah. I just looked. Um, I think last week they had 3.7 million viewers. They had, they're, they're the wow. number two show, I think. Number two. Wow. Eric. What our do you think of that? Will I be seen in Qatar? That's Cutter. (laughs) (laughs) Ignoramus. Everyone knows that. Uh, Wow. Eric, what do you think? You excited? Sounds interesting. Mm. Just interesting. He doesn't commit. No, no. He's he's really... I think that's, you know, that that whole negotiating thing. He's not really going to commit to anything until Johnny locks it in. Yeah. How many days do you think you need them initially? Well, probably just one to start, mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, we'll see how it goes. What does a guy get for one day's work on there? Um, an under five is... Yeah, he's definitely under five. What are you, three-something? <laughs> under five is about... No, we don't mean height, Rob. We mean lines. Yeah, he's definitely under five foot. <laughs> how many... You're not going to give him more than five lines? Uh, well... I mean, we can. You know, this I have to go back to my boss and pitch it to him who writes the show, right? Um, and 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 you know, figure that out. But normally, uh, 
Depending on the role, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just saying an under five is you know the basic, and then then there's a principal rate. All right, what's the principal rate? Because he wants to be a principal. Well, he's well, going to go we'll, with the under five. We can first. negotiate with him because uh, I know there's travel involved. Mm-hmm. There's other expenses, right, Eric? Wow. Yes. You're in Oakland. Or where are you? Sacramento. Up north? Sacramento. Sacramento. See, so. Are there, uh, or, or drive or? are there werewolves in Los Angeles? Because Eric, <laughs> we put him into a project last time where there was talk about there might be werewolves. This was in New Mexico. Hmm. Mm. Eric, he was wanted nervous. a werewolf net or something. I, I heard know. there were werewolves in New Mexico. I, I also like the idea that he was a uh, like a modeling agent. Yes, he with, really we tried. Deal, we deal with a lot of models, so. He would love you know. that. How about he plays a modeling agent who wears a diaper? <laughs> <laughs> would you play that, Eric? No diapers. Okay. All right. Okay. Trying to, try okay. to, try to get some. Yeah, I don't think Daytime's done that storyline with a, <laughs> someone wearing a diaper. <laughs> uh, I shit my pants. <laughs> Heidi Klum, change me. No, all right. We know the uh, we know the areas Eric is comfortable with. All that's left is the negotiation. Uh, so, how would you like to handle this, Casey? Do you want me, Eric? Do you want me to send Casey your information? Sure. All right. I'll get back to you today. All right. Okay. That's usually Eric. Eric, Eric, that's usually where you say thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And, and by the way, Howard. I have nothing the fuck to do with killing those shows. <laughs> Eric, Price Eric, Eric, Eric. It's the fifth and final season, regardless if I was on it or A not. A lot of people are blaming you for the end of Fringe. J.J. <laughs> Abrams uh, called me and said, Every, as soon as we put Eric on, we got a cancellation. You know what? I just have to tell... Um, Casey? Casey, don't write any comedy for Eric. Mm. Well, jokes mm. go right over his head. Yeah, I, I think Robin was okay. kidding, uh, Eric. <laughs> so, the, Jeez, um, woman. <laughs> yeah, although his last role was on Mary McCormick's show, they canceled that. I just want to say, Eric, if he is passionate, I would appreciate it if he would watch the show. And next time we talk, I might give him a quiz just to know if he's been watching. Well, Can you fair. do that, Eric? Yeah. What time's the show on, Casey? Because I know Eric's too lazy to look it up. What? Daytime. It's uh, probably, I'm not sure what time in Sacramento. In L.A., it's on at uh, 1230. Okay. All right, Casey Kasparoskic, the (laughs) producer (laughs) of Bold and Beautiful, and uh, Eric, the actor, who uh, now is landing, it looks as if he's in the middle of landing a major role on Bold and Beautiful, where he'll have a reoccurring character. Yeah. Uh, I believe that this, it, even though, lest anyone think his lack of excitement is going to hurt him, it seems that this is going forward. And oddly enough, it's probably the break Eric's been waiting for because everything is just a one-shot deal with him. This could be a recurring role. Well, if the shows don't last, how can he reoccur? <laughs> well, we've been on for 26 years. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see if that lasts. <laughs> there you go. I am not a show killer. Shut <laughs> the fuck up with that bullshit. Hey. You, oh you can prove him wrong, Eric. All right? You can do it. I tell you, with the with the enthusiasm, you know, I can imagine, Casey, you see actors come in there. When they audition, they're just full of energy. I mean, this guy, I mean, talk about a lack of excitement. He's not even auditioning, and he's just, you know. You would think the way he's behaving, he was auditioning for the role of a houseplant. Mm-hmm. It's almost 6 a.m. here. So what? What's that to do with anything? Dude, you're getting offered a reoccurring role on The Bold and the Beautiful. We're more excited than you. I'm half awake because I uh, took night quill. Oh. No, you didn't say that. I have an abuse problem. (laughs) 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 Oh, my (laughs) quill. I can't wait to see this show. Here's Eric before his acting lesson. And now, ten hours later after his first acting lesson, here he is. 
Fuckheads doing that. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, Erica, good luck with your negotiation. And uh, Thank well. This is a big break. And uh, why couldn't you be more energetic, uh, Eric, over there? Thank well. <laughs> <laughs> you're half asleep? <laughs> it sounds like you're falling asleep. <laughs> you sound like the dog in Caninus. Uh... Casey, uh, good luck to you and the show. What an ops! What an opportunity for Eric. Well, thank you for uh, entertaining it and putting it, to, uh, helping to put it together and put us in touch. All right, I'll uh, facilitate Keep that. Touch. Eric, you thank can you. thank me now. Hmm? Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Nothing like dragging a thank you out of yeah, a guy. Yeah, yeah. Don't overdo it. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, I'm and by the way, thank you. what? I was going to thank you. I was going to thank you regardless if you prompted me or not. All right. And by the way, I do want to say, Casey, Eric is not a show killer. <laughs> good, good to know. Good to know. Good to know. All right, Casey. Good luck. And pleasure to speak with you. Eric, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, Robin. Oh, that's going to be great. That's going to be a good show. <laughs> Eric's going to have to take acting lessons. Hey, as long as we're on this theme here.